Hello legends, it's Quan here. Thanks for tuning in for today's video. Oh, market crash. A scary scary thing that all investors would fear. But when the market crash comes, does this really mean that all stocks will automatically become worthless like this shoe umbrella? Should we sell off everything then? Should we stand there and do nothing? Let's find out what we as investors should do during a market crash. Alright, into the next segment. Calm your soul first. Everyone in this world literally has a smartphone and constantly gets bombarded by news all day, all night. According to The Guardian, we pick up our phones 58 times per day and this makes up a total of 3 hours of use time. Imagine that 3 hours of use time where our phones constantly feed us news and more news like a substance addict. This is not going to help our brain to stay calm and focused. The last thing we want to do is to panic selling. If we panic sell, the consequence will be equivalent to Kim Jong-un pressing the rocket button and seeing our portfolios get destroyed after years of building it. Worst of all, after panic selling and you notice the stock prices went to the moon like nothing happened. So, if you don't want to have an annoyed face like this Indian man in the meme, don't panic sell and relax here. Yeah? The goal here is to buy low and hold, not buy high and sell low. Market crash is basically a playing a squid game with you. And all you have to do is not to play the squid game. Let us now explore what we as investors can do during a market crash. Into the next segment. Average down the dip? You see the thing is, if you own a company that you have no deep knowledge about, you will definitely get freaked out during a market crash. It's like you get married to a woman, but after years of living and suddenly you found out that she's actually a man. Like this photo intended. So the truth of the matter is, if you know this company inside out and there's nothing significant wrong with the business fundamentals, you're in a perfect position to average down the dip. But if you realize the business fundamentals of the company that you own is rotting like this guy joining in acidic ways, it's better for you to cut the loss and run far far like the road runner running away from the coyote. But don't overrun like the coyote lah. Better be safe than sorry later. For example, if you always think that Google's stock price is attractive at $3,000, you should like it more at a current price of $2,800. Don't waste your energy in timing the market. You can't possibly know the target price out of 7 billion people in the world unless you can read minds like Professor X in X-Men. A good habit here would be to go back and revisit your investment thesis and check if your investment thesis remains intact or not. Alright, into the next segment. Sell the stocks? Going back to the basics, investors only sell the stocks in these scenarios. Number 1. When investors realize the stock valuation has become outrageously high like Dogecoin sitting on a rocket going to the moon. Assuming you have been back holding GameStop, yeah, that GameStop, and the market valuation of $1 billion. And a short squeeze drama caused its valuation to rise up to $20 billion at a peak in one month. That's essentially 20 times the money already. Let's visualize this in terms of internal rate of return. Suppose you have been back holding GameStop for $1,000. 20 times increase in valuation means your investment multiplied by 20 times in one month. And the internal rate of return is, I don't know how to pronounce it anymore. What? See this outrageous internal rate of return right there is the perfect exit opportunity one can ask for. Leave the back holding to other people. <laughs> Number 2. When investors realize the bad news actually hurts the company, like the recent Chinese private education stocks being made non-profit overnight. Another example is the airlines company in the early March 2020, when WHO announced the COVID-19 as a worldwide pandemic. These two examples show that there are times when macroeconomic conditions and bad news actually do hurt the businesses like a giant meteor crashing down on Earth. So essentially speaking, if there's nothing wrong in the businesses that you own, don't bother to fix it. Why fix it if it ain't broken? Alright, into the next segment. Hodling the stocks? Holding the stocks and doing nothing is also an action itself, paradoxically. The analogy is that if you bought a house at 500,000 ringgit and somehow the value of the house drops to 400,000 ringgit, would you immediately sell the house? You can, you can, for sure sell the house away. But where are you going to stay? Be a homeless person and don't forget the amount of losses you will incur after selling the house. This act of selling would be a meaningless action. Meaningless like this watering can here. You know what's not meaningless? Give this video a like, sub, click the bell for more video every Friday. Now bringing this to the stock analogy. If, for example, you own Nike stock and the stock price went down like a roller coaster, but Nike stock already makes up 50% of your portfolio, you'd probably better just hodl it. Okay, memes aside, the reason you want to hodl is to prevent over-concentration of your portfolio. It's always wise to have a protection layer in place in your portfolio. That way, you wouldn't have a single stock that can single-handedly decide the fate of your portfolio. That's not all. As Charlie Munger famously said, the big money is not in the buying or selling, but in the waiting. I mean, 
Take a look at Charlie Munger's stock trading history over the years. He can sit there and do nothing in his portfolio for 7 years. Many new investors also have the tendency to always switch stocks as frequently as changing clothes. This is definitely not a good habit for long-term investors as the trading fees can already eat up like Pac-Man eating all your money away. So sit on your investment for a long time until you become old uncle, old auntie. Alright, into the next segment. Sell put options? Suppose you are a fan of Apple company but you don't know how low the stock price can go and you would love to own 100 Apple shares. The current Apple stock price is $100 and this will cost you $10,000 to buy all the Apple shares. You might think that this $10,000 is quite expensive. So this is where selling put options can come into play. You can sell one put option on the market extract price of $50 per share for one month expiry date. And the buyer of this put option pays you $5 premium per share. You receive a total premium of $500. If Apple stock price falls from $100 to $50 within a month, the buyer of the put option will want you to buy 100 Apple shares from him at the strike price of $50. You essentially pay $5,000 to own 100 Apple shares. But remember that you receive a premium of $500 on the put option buyer. You can use this $500 premium to subsidize the total purchase cost, making your total actual purchase cost only $4,500. So you see, you can sell put options to help reduce your purchase costs. Wow! Selling put option can reduce my Apple stock purchase costs using premium income. Ah. What am I waiting for? Just sell puts all day, all night, man. Hold up. You see, selling puts all day can have a negative effect. If Apple stock falls to $30 instead of $50 per share, you are better off just buying Apple stocks at that $30 market price. It's much cheaper. And the second thing is, if you don't have enough money to buy the Apple stocks when the put option exercises, your broker will liquidate a portion of your portfolio to help top up the purchase. In other words, your portfolio will GG like your Lego set getting destroyed after years of hard work. Even though you may have balls of steals like the monks in Johnny English, it's best to sell put options wisely and make sure you have enough cash to buy the stocks in case the put option gets exercised. In the end, selling put option is just one way to help hedge against stock price. But it is not a perfect hedge. Just like our lives, we don't have perfect lives. Hi. All right, into the next segment. My final thoughts. All right, all in all, if you already have a solid portfolio of businesses, just fasten a seatbelt and ride it out through the wave like Takumi in Initial D. Patience will reward you greatly in investment and in life. I've also previously made a video about how you can make money during a market crash. Click the bubble on top or the description down below. Let me know in the comments if you agree with these four choices. What other choices do you make during stock market crashes? Be sure to like, sub, click the bell for more video every Friday. Thanks for watching Legends. I'll see you in the next one.